Hey, Ghost Guy Daniel here. I did the podcast this week, uh, Why Hamilton is So Haunted. It's uh, focusing on my own personal home city. It was a really exciting one. I actually want to cover some more locations within Hamilton, but that's not the reason I'm here. A YouTube page is a companion to the podcast, so whatever happened on the show gets additional coverage on here. Anything that needs a visual element. That's what I love about this page. So what I'm going to cover right now is Albion Falls. Now I uh personally a fan of this page. There we go, that's what I want. This location, as mentioned on the podcast, could very well be considered the darkest history of any town in all of Canada. Now, for length of history on how old it is, definitely. You're talking about a loyalist town settled in the 1700s, which gives it an advantage over anything within British Canada. Of course, Quebec has a uh, longer history. The French were here first. But for British Canada, which is... Um, has its roots in Ontario, uh, towns like Niagara on the Lake and Kingston. And of course, as I mentioned in the podcast, Hamilton is a big part of that. So when you get into that history, when you really dive in deep, you know, it's amazing what comes out. Because the longer a place has been around, the more occurs in said location. Therefore, the more interest from a historian's uh, point of view or a history buff such as myself from, from my point of view and of course ghosts now sadly albion mills which is the town where the falls currently occupy the once town that has been sadly wiped from the map due to progress one of the main reasons is the building of the red hill expressway so it's a highway that goes through Hamilton. You got the Lincoln Alexander leads to the Red Hill. So the Red Hill kind of comes around from the uh, the link. And when it comes around approximately at the, just after the Dartnell Road exit, and then you get the Stone Church slash Mud Street, that's where Albion Mills used to be located. So they had to build through there. And you have progress, right? So you also have housing surveys and, Thankfully, conservation has gotten involved to, to save the falls, but, uh, you know, it's not as much as it could have been. And you'll see on here a couple of buildings. Uh, one slightly still exists, but it's not going to have the same energy as if it was an enclosed space. So Albion Mills no longer exists. And if you want to hear more about it, and of course the tragic story of Jane Riley who is the resident ghost, I recommend, jaded point of view, I recommend you listen to my podcast, Ghost Guy Daniel Podcast. Find it everywhere. Uh, just listen to the Why Hamilton is So Haunted episode. But that's not why we're here. Why we're here? A little bit more context on Albion Mills and Albion Falls. I must give a warning off the bat. One of the photos here is uh, graphic. I will warn you before that one comes up. But if you don't like seeing that kind of crap, I understand. Again, I'll warn you if you want to shut it off then so that you can watch everything leading up to it, which will be very interesting. I guarantee. Well, I, I hope. Okay, so uh, I got a historic photo here. This is Albion Falls. Um, now you got the precipice here, which has changed quite a bit. I have another more modern photo that you'll see in a second, but just keep an eye on the, how it's changed. The bridge going over here is now a dead man's curve, which is the road that goes along the top. Uh, there's some buildings here, I guess, part of the town. Of course, back in the day, if you had a town, usually you had to have um, some kind of flowing body of water. And one of the main reasons was the old fashioned mills, uh, ran off the power of, of the water. 
So for that reason, you had, you saw nothing. You had <laughs> uh, a lot of these towns popping up. Uh, you know, Hamilton Mountain would have been important for this because you had so many waterfalls, Hamilton being the city of waterfalls. Uh, Albion is one of the more impressive ones. So the buildings here are probably related to the mill. Uh, so that's a historic photo of the falls. Here is more the modern version taken by uh, a great photographer named Ghost Guy Daniel. Uh, so you can see at the top here where the bridge kind of went by, there's no more buildings, sadly. Uh, no mill structures. I don't think there is foundations, not that you could actually put foundations into the stone. Uh, definitely more aesthetically pleasing. Although it is from a different view. Uh, and the road up here, Dead Man's Curve, uh, is now the road that kind of goes through uh, Albion Falls. So on this side here, standing behind me, would be the parking lot for people to get out at. There's trails, some trails around here. Uh, one trail, you can actually go down to the bottom of the falls. Uh, this is approximately where the workers were standing when, when Jane Riley... Uh, took her jump, most likely landing approximately there onto the rocks. Again, part of the podcast. So this is this is the blacksmith shop. Now this is uh, of note, not just because it's a building in Albion Mills, and you can see uh, some of the residents there in front. This is actually quite quite detailed in that sense. Um, not the best resolution, unfortunately, but. He has a little kid there too. So I assume one of these men, probably this fella here, because he's got the suspenders, is the blacksmith. <laughs> You'd always tell who's in charge, whoever is wearing the suspenders, and has got this beautiful bald head <laughs> that's kind of reflecting the sun a tad. Um, anyway, I'm getting too detailed about this, but he's most likely the blacksmith. Oh, yeah, look at it. I didn't even notice the cars over here. That is cool. Now, if these are kind of the modern cars, it looks like this would have been the early 1900s. So it almost looks 1920s, 1930s is my guess. So that's the blacksmith shop on how it looked when it was an actual shop. Um, or right here. I have it out of order. So how it looks today is the interesting part. So this is um, kind of an entrance into the trail. Uh, this is the... I'm not sure what it's called, trail. <laughs> That's not official. But I don't think this was most likely the original location because you used to be able to see the blacksmith shop from the highway. Uh, now, I, I brought, I have a Google map here. Hopefully it gives you a better idea of how this is situated. So yeah, here's the highway here. It looks like they've covered it up since, so you can't see it as well. Uh, yeah, so the highway would have been over here on the left-hand side. So yeah, they used trees to cover it up. I guess you don't want to remind people that history was destroyed. I don't know. That's just my guess. I could be wrong. Uh, so the blacksmith shop is right here. There's the Red Hill Valley, which went right through. Uh, there's Albion Falls. So the town would have been located around here, leading all the way through. And you see a lot of it was kind of just destroyed. It went right through the heart. Is give you an idea, you have the what was the town over here, and then we scroll in to this new housing survey. Uh, there are the blacksmith uh, ruins are right there. And then we come over here. Um, we go over here somewhere. There it is. That is the cemetery, which I'll show you in a second. So Albion's Mills Cemetery. Uh, the supposed uh, witch's grave would be located on this side right here close to the road. And I'll show you that too. So there's their situation. Uh, blacksmith shop up here. Trail is, according to Google Maps, completely unnamed. <laughs> I'm sure it's official though. Uh, but you can see it's a cool trail if you take it down through the Red Hill Valley. So it's probably part of the Red Hill Valley Trail. Anyway, I digress. 
So blacksmith shop ruins. Now the photo that was misplaced, this is the Albion Tavern uh, slash hotel. And uh, this would have been located at the top of the original hill. And I can't, where was it? Not Mountain Bow Boulevard. Hmm. Maybe somebody can uh, remind me. But anyway, there used to be the Albion Road, Mount Albion Road, uh, that was down at the bottom of the hill uh, in the Stony Creek side. So where the Red Hill kind of goes through today, not Quigley Road, but it would have been around here. Mount Albion Road, there it is. So Mount Albion Road used to come up, 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 up. Okay, all right, so that makes more sense now. So Mount Albion Road would have come up to where that trail is currently and would have come up to at the very top of the hill would have been the hotel. So uh, they kind of left it close to the main road that came into town. So this hotel used to exist. I actually remember as a child it was still there. Uh, we, I forget why but we took that road up to the up to the hill it was before any of the expressway so it was one of the ways you could get up there and i remember at the top of the hill near there maybe not exactly at the top when you turned onto dead man's curve uh which probably we're probably going to the falls uh the, this building was there completely abandoned it was uh it was creepy as heck looking if you look at it now i mean it looks looks fairly modern i'm not i don't know the history of it you can see the way it's shaped. It would have been more historic, but maybe they redid the outside to make it look more modern. And by modern, I mean gross. Not really cool looking. <laughs> so yeah, I remember uh, that being abandoned at the top of the hill. So even when I was a child, even though I didn't know the history, I kind of knew that this place was was different. Ruins. Okay, so here's the cemetery. So you remember I pointed that out on here. Uh, it's located in the survey. I keep losing it. Oh, it's right here. It's the closest I can get with... That's the closest. So here's the cemetery right here. Surrounded by houses now. You can see how it was back then with the fields. Must have been uh, impressive to visit. And um, that's all I have there. So I don't have any modern photos of the actual cemetery space. But what I do have is the witch's grave how it looks today so you can see it's separate from the actual cemetery which would have been behind me as i took this photo and there's the housing surveys and these new privacy fences so people don't have to look at the witch uh there's really not much in there it used to be a headstone now i have been told by a couple sources that i trust uh, one uh, grew up in the area that uh, the headstone actually did say warlock when I say which, of course, I mean the male version because it was a dude uh, in that it actually said warlock on it. And I mean, back in the day, you could be buried separate from your townsfolk for a few reasons. Being a warlock would be one of them. Uh, anything that was against Christian belief would be a, a good reason. So um, that could have caused it. But he's separate from the main uh, the main cemetery, oh, of course, uh, suicide, which is back then, uh, depending what you believed, was throwing God's gift back in his face. And it was considered, uh, of course, sacrilegious, which makes sense. So whether this person was a warlock, uh, because the sources I do trust that the gravestone said that, I'll leave that up to you. Uh, you know, feel free to post anything in the comments as well. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and the last thing I want to cover is uh, something that get, adds to its dark history is not the only reason, uh, is uh, Evelyn Dick. So that's who you're looking at right here. Uh, she is the famous murderess, torso murderess of the Hamilton area, uh, accused of setting up the murder of her husband that led to uh, a torso being dumped now not the next photo but the one after that so this photo here these scrappy little kids the one in the front looks <laughs> looks like the cool he's the leader just like the blacksmith in the last one you know the suspenders you can tell he's the leader because of his uh his look he's just got that cool look on his face and 
that was a cool old Maple Leafs uh, sweater here. Uh, anyway, so these are the kids that found the torso. So just a very quick background. Um, this human torso was found about a kilometer down the road from Albion Falls. Uh, they um, did whatever forensics of the time that they had. They found out it was a fellow named John Dick. Now, when they start looking into his life, they eventually meet his wife, Evelyn. Now, this isn't the focus of this video, so I'm not going to get too far into detail. But, you know, in the end, Evelyn was accused of the murder and put on trial and a bunch of craziness ensued. But again, I'm not going to get into detail there. Let's just focus in on the torso because, they, you know, you have the falls, um, the, the falls right here. And there's Dead Man's Curve. So it would have been down the road. Now, I don't know the exact location down the road somewhere, maybe around here, give or take. You can correct me on that one, uh, is where the torso was found. So it would have been considered part of Albion Mills. Now, uh, why this was the chosen spot has uh, mafia roots, not the mafia being involved. I want to make that very clear. But that Evelyn Dick kind of spun this as a mafia hit on her husband. Again, I'm not going to get too far in the details. So the torso itself. Warning, I'm going to show a graphic photo. If you don't want to see this, then uh, you can click away, maybe fast forward a few seconds, uh, up to you. I've really gone the meat of the video, so you're not going to miss too much after this. Uh, but yeah, in uh, three, two, one. There you go. And I'm going to zoom in on it because I know whoever has stayed on the video has a bloodlust such as myself. <laughs> <laughs> you you, uh, you want to see it. So this is the torso that those uh, plucky children found, these fellows. Uh, they were playing, and then one young lady, uh, they were playing in the field, and they saw something in the bushes that they thought was a dead animal. Uh, but something about it was strange, as you can see. So they got their parents, and their parents knew right away because of the fact that it was wearing a shirt. So you have the human torso right here uh, underneath the shirt. Uh, the, the head would have been there, the arms. You get the idea. So they found out it was John Dick that was tossed into this field. So you get this idea, right? You get this idea of a place that has some very interesting dark histories. You understand that if this place had some locations that still existed, it would be a focal point, not just for paranormal investigators, but for historians themselves. Anybody who's looking to tell a unique story about a city and a country. Now, Canada doesn't have a lot of this type of history. So the fact that you have to dig like this to find it is an unfortunate situation. I do not agree with the removal of dark tourism uh, dark history locations that could eventually lead to dark tourism. A good example of this is the Rocco Perry house that once existed uh, off of Bay Street, that it was uh, demolished, but it would have made a wonderful museum to prohibition and, and bootleggers, but we have lost that opportunity. So at least with Albion, thanks to the falls, that some of the history has been preserved down there as a conservation area. And that was the simple goal of this video, was to explain that much more. Again, it is a companion to the podcast, Why Hamilton is So Haunted. Just search Ghost Guide Daniel wherever. You'll come across it. Again, my name is Daniel. Thanks for watching.